Okay. So what is basically needed in your persuasion? Uh, sorry, what is basically needed in your uh, pitching session? Okay. Of course, in your introduction, you need to have attention grab, attention getter, or attention grabber. Uh, so attention getter and attention grabber ni is basically applicable to all assessments, including your first speech, your second speech, your pitching session, even your first assessment, which is introductory of introduction of of a uh, informative speech. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, you must uh, clearly uh, whatever that that I have actually uh, taught you for an introduction where you need to have attention getter, where you need to establish your credibility, where you need to introduce your topic and so on. So those criteria are needed in an introduction of any speech, of any speech, including pitching session. Semua tu mesti ada. Okay. And in, it includes as well the introduction of the issue. So what is basically you are trying to what you are trying to sell, what you're trying to pitch, and that is your, your product or your service or both or the idea of a product or a service, okay? And then right after that, in your main points, you are to, of course, uh, support your main points. Uh, you must have at least three main points. I repeat, yeah, you must have at least three main points and each main point must be supported with relevant examples, must also be supported with strong evidence, must also be supported with uh, strong justifications, okay? Uh, so evidence, uh, justification, uh, example, so that it becomes very clear, okay? And then, of course, in your conclusion, you must be able to reiterate. Reiterate means that you must be able to conclude the whole main points in a very simple way so that we understand what you're trying to pitch. Pitching me is where you're going to convince us. You're going to convince the assessors, yeah, your assessors. You're going to convince them that you are going to do this and you're going to convince them that you're going to... Uh, up and in, uh, uh, you're going to sell this idea, you're going to sell this product, you're going to sell this uh, service, for example, and you need them to invest in you, or maybe you need them to give you a, a grant, so that is what pitching session is all about, yeah? I hope by now you should already have a clear understanding what pitching session is all about. Yeah, mesti ada clear understanding. Saya tak you dalam keadaan, you kata, what is this, I don't quite understand and what not lah. All right. Uh, of course, if you are asking me, Mr. E, what about the visual aids? As you can see here, you must also have a visual aid for your pitching session. Okay, you need to have your visual aid for your for your pitching session. So as I think that that is why I have covered all the aspects of speech in the beginning, because whatever that you have learned, uh, the aspects of the speech, you you are going to apply that uh, in your informative speech, which you have done uh, hari tu, uh, in your pitching session, which you will be doing it in week 11, and in your persuasive speech, which you will be doing it in week 14, okay? Uh, 14, can I check, eh? Say check balik. Yes, in week 14, yeah? You can buat your pitching session tu. So that is why I cover dulu all the aspects of a speech though. So that when I talk about delivery, uh, delivery, when I talk about visual aids, semua faham apa yang saya nak sampaikan kat sini. Okay, uh, so as I mentioned to you just now in the beginning, attention, get uh, introduction, the same thing that you apply for your informative speech, you must have it, you must have all the criteria in your pitching session. You must have at least three main points. And then uh, you must have a conclusion, of course, and you must equip your in, uh, pitching session with uh, uh, at least one visual aid. If you have more, that would be good. But then again, the more you have visual aids too, walaupun it be good, tapi hopefully it is relevant and it is to justify your your points. Kalau sekadar nak macam ada banyak sangat, uh, apa, uh, too many, um, uh, what they call it, uh, visual aid spoon, kalau they are not effective, no point, okay, no point. All right, so this is basically the descriptors for your pitching session lah. I think I have mentioned this. Nanti video ni, the one that I have recorded ni, I will upload it on YouTube and I will share with you so you can always refer back just in case you have missed this mass lecture, yeah. All right, so this is just a sample, you know, uh, how uh, your, ataupun what is needed to be included in your in your pitching session so let us look at uh, at at this uh apa ni um 
at this sample given ya and this sample nanti pun saya akan share dalam kita punya Google Classroom not to not to uh, ni apa ni uh, not to worry about this ya okay so basically the topic is advertising on coffee cups so at introduction I believe that I have the most effective form of advertising available on the market today the advertisements can be exposed to customers for 2,220 2, seconds on average. Problem, unless you have a multinational company or a global brand, almost every business out there goes by on a limited budget, especially for advertising. With the abundance of advertisements all over the place, it is not easy to make your business stand out. So proposal, now what kind of advertisement has the kind of exposure time? Ladies and gentlemen, we advertise on coffee cups. That's right. We put your brand in their in their hands. Okay. So how does coffee cup advertising work? Firstly, we need an advertiser. They pay us money. We produce paper coffee cups with their advertising or brand on it. Then we give these coffee cups to coffee stands for free. So now, why does someone want to advertise on a coffee cup? According to a study. So this is where you support. Yeah. According to a study at Washington at University in USA. Washington University in USA, the average person holds their cup for 53 minutes and they drink blah, blah, blah until the end. I don't want, I'm not going to read it out for you. So this is just justification, all right? And then, of course, this is a conclusion. But as you can see here, the proposal, the solution, as well as the justification is only for one point sahaja. And you repeat the same process for your second point and for your third point, okay? Because you need to have at least three points. Uh, faham eh? So yang sample yang kita kasih ni is only for for one point sahaja. And number two, as you can see here, because this is actually taken from uh, you know available online, uh, the justification, the solution given here is basically based on a study done in Washington University in USA. But then again, because given that you are here in Malaysia, do you think that do you think that by by providing this uh, the supporting details will help you to convince your investors will help you to convince your your um whoever that is listening to your pitching session because this is happening in usa so you may want to find uh, supporting details that are very localized so that it will be relevant to your point because let's say in this case you would like to advertise uh, whatever products or or services of other companies or from other advertisers on a coffee cup which is good but then again when you support with this supporting details you may want to ask yourself this is taken from the perspective of USA people you know uh, maybe it's a culture there there where people drink you know I even drink coffee right out from this uh, tin can not from any coffee cup so sometimes uh, whatever whatever that seems to be popular in certain countries may not be suitable in our country so this is the this is the crucial and critical part for you to decide what are the supporting materials or details that you will be using in order to support your points your three points yeah your three points so this is basic but this is a, I, I just want you to get the idea yeah i just want you to get the idea or oh, this is how you support that means you try to find materials from research findings ke, uh, maybe you 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 find from books or articles ke, you know uh, statistics that can actually help you to convince your investors so on and so forth lah. all right so basically you can apply this um method for your pitching session Okay, I will share this. Uh, I will share this uh, sample nanti dekat kita punya Google Classroom. Don't worry, yeah. All right, so you can have a look at this. But as I mentioned to you, this is just a sample. A sample means that something for you to look at and something for you to know the general and the bigger picture of the idea. I don't want you to think that uh, okay, we have to follow like this exactly the same. No, not necessarily. Okay, not necessarily. This is just a sample. I'm not saying that this is a guideline. I'm not saying that this is a template. No, this is just a sample uh, on how to pitch uh, an idea to someone. Okay, uh, and as you can see here, this person chooses an idea. So not necessarily it can it has to be done this way because if you have a product or if you have a service that you like to pitch, then that would be good. All right, that will be okay and acceptable as well. So uh, it's you to choose. All right, it's you to choose. And again, of course, as I mentioned to you, uh, whatever topic, whatever idea product that you are choosing, it cannot be the same as your friends. Tak boleh jadi sama. Jangan pilih benda yang sama atau lebih kurang sama. So orang nak buat advertisement on the cup, uh, on the coffee cup. So orang nak buat advertisement uh, apa ni? Uh, uh, 
I, I don't know what else uh, utensils that we can actually use. Uh, you know, some other things like lebih kurang sama je concept dia. If you are actually pitching the same concept, I highly advise you not to. So this is where this is the uh, this is where the role of class rep is very important where you need to coordinate this with your friends, you know, with your group mates. So in your own WhatsApp group, decide and make sure you can go through, you can help, you can be my my uh, helper to go through uh, the topics just to make sure that people don't choose do the same concept, the same topic, the same idea. Boleh. You do not need to revert to me. You boleh. Class rep boleh. Because as people, uh, as your friends update, uh, you know, the topics dekat dalam, dekat dalam, uh, in, in, in the WhatsApp group, you can actually use that. Boleh tengok, go through and ask yourself, eh, sama ke, lebih kurang sama je. And jadi, maybe you can also, uh, sebab you can also talk about, um, you can also talk about, um, apa ni, uh, sorry, where was I just now? Uh, okay, you can also go through together, not necessarily class rep je. Your friends pun can go through together and then tengok dekat situ. Uh, apa ni, uh, boleh tengok dekat situ. Uh, eh, kalau lebih kurang sama je topik, lebih kurang sama je idea, you can also make mention dekat dalam group tu. Uh, hi friends, I noticed that your topic is the same as mine ke? Uh, macam gitu. So you have each other to to remind each other. I, I cannot be going through all, yeah. Tapi kalau if you're not sure, if you're not really sure, when you when you try to to ask your friends, eh, I think your topic is about the same as mine lah. Kata contoh lah. But then your friend kata, do you think so? I don't think so lah. So to avoid bickering or argument between you and that person, you can always come to see me lah. Kata Mr. E, this is my topic. This is my friend's topic. We have discussed and we still feel that it is different. But then again, we fear that in your own perspective, they may look alike. So, do you think that this is of the same topic or they are different? Contoh, boleh. Tapi saya tak nak you terus-terus tanya. You must be able to discuss first with your friends. Okay? Uh, class rep pun memainkan peranan juga dekat sini, ya? Yeah? Okay. So, this is about pitching session and also, of course, the assessment that comes after this. Uh, that is the, apa ni? Um, uh, persuasive speech. Ya? Yeah? Persuasive speech. Okay, so done with this, the last part that I would like to talk about when you are doing your pitching session, so when you are pitching a product, when you're pitching your service or even an idea, so what are the things to be done, okay? So number one, keep your introduction succinct. So don't begin the pitch with a long recitation about yourself, your achievements, your company's history and so on. I noticed that when I attend any pitching session, even uh, if it is just a competition, I do understand the part that you need to establish your credibility as to why you are pitching this, which is good actually, and it's a strong justific justification. Imagine that you want to sell coffee, for example, like this case, you want to sell Nescafe, and then this is the product. But you, of course, you need to talk about, um, you need to establish your credibility as to why you want to uh, sell this product and you think that this is a good product that everyone has to buy it. I, you, need an in, you need investors to sell this and at the end of the day, uh, this, this, uh, dia akan memberi pulangan yang lumayan kepada investors tersebut because this coffee is good and whatnot. So to establish credibility because number one, you are an avid coffee drinker. That means you like to drink coffee and you've been drinking coffee for so long, you know a lot of things about coffee. Number two, you used to work in a coffee shop. Ke. Number three, you started off with a small coffee business, ke, which is good, okay, which is very, very good because you are establishing your credibility. But imagine this, in your introduction, let's say you have one complete introduction, tapi three quarter of your introduction, you talk about yourself, you talk about your achievements, your company histories, etc. People don't want really, I mean, of course we do We do understand that you're credible enough, good enough. So when you talk about credibility, to establish credibility, you must first understand it should be short and sweet, good enough for 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 uh, your assessors or whoever is listening to you because this is applicable even not during our assessment. If let's say there's a competition going on, on pitching, so you pun kena ingat, your credibility too should be good enough for your judges, for your investors to only to only be convinced by you that you're credible enough to sell this product. Tuja. 
Okay, tapi janganlah too lengthy Sampai sebenarnya this pitching session is about you You're not selling the product but you're selling yourself uh, This is the part that you need to understand, okay Number two, show self-assurance So confidence sells and buyers are often as attracted to the seller as to the product Trust me So when you are confident, it's like you know yourself You own the whole session You own this product just ask me anything about this product. Within fingertips, I can answer your question because I own this product. I own everything that it contains because this product is about coffee. So everything about coffee, just ask me. I know because I've read, I have experiences. I know uh, that is the kind of confidence that you need to have in your pitching session. You tak boleh ada self-doubt. You cannot appear indecisive. You cannot use words like I think, in my opinion, tak boleh. So nampak tak penggunaan ayat pun penting in your pitching session. When you want to show confidence, instead of saying that I believe that this product can help you guys. No, because we don't want to listen to what you believe in. We want to know it, it is yes or no, tu sahaja. So instead of saying that I believe that this product can help you, I believe that this product will uh, give a lot of money in return, a lot of uh, need in return. You just say something this. This is what I can say. If you are going to invest in my company, if you are going to invest in promoting this product, in five years to come, here's the figure that you're going to get. See how confident is that? People will be like, wow, okay. Oh, this is the this is the the amount that I'm going to get. Oh, this is this, this is this. Nampak tak? Uh, so they they are going to be convinced by that, yeah. Tapi imagine that you kata, I believe when people ask you, uh, okay, um, uh, what about uh, return of investment? Uh, kita panggil ROI lah, return on in, on on investment. What will I get? Um, um, um I think around 20k, uh, 20k ke 25k macam tu. Oh, tak boleh. That is not confident enough. You must be, when you are selling the product, when you're pitching the product, you're also selling your confidence. And trust me, when you are confident, people will surely buy this product. People will surely invest in your, in your product. Okay? So avoid doubt in pitch. Never say that it is my goal or hope for something. Use key phrases like it will. Exit belief in your product. So as much as you have trust upon this product, and you feel that this product can bring you in a long run, you must be able to channel that feeling to your future investors or the judges or even your assessors as they listen to your pitching session. So that is number two. Okay, number three, sell value, not price. Now value beats price, so it's essential to hammer home the value of your product. Sellers have a tendency to over-focus on price upfront but zeroing in on the concrete value that customers get out of a product is much more important. So talk about the value. Don't talk about the, the price. Of course, you can talk a little bit about the price because we just have to face the fact and reality. I'm going to invest my money. I need to know where this money is going to. Mana duit ni pergi? I nak tahu. Okay, when you talk about this product, what is the cost of producing just one tin can of coffee? Berapa, berapa, berapa duit yang diperlukan untuk hasilkan satu ni sahaja. So, how many do you plan to sell? How many do you plan to produce? What is your marketing strategies? What could be other costs? That, of course, you can talk about that. On paper, when they agree to to invest in your in your product. Not during your, your pitching session. During your pitching session, you can just say it in general, but mo talk more about the value. What they can get when I purchase this coffee, for about three ringgit something lah contoh, which is quite pricey ya, so I beli dekat Petronas. Three ringgit something contohnya. What will I get in return? What kind of coffee am I drinking? So they are the chosen coffee beans contohnya, selected ones from countries. You know, kalau you tengok kan, uh, Starbucks kan, a lot of people when they go to Starbucks, they say that Starbucks, they are not actually selling products, but they are actually selling the environment the ambience, you know, when you go to Starbucks, you take pictures, you take photos, you upload it on your on your uh, Instagram, you upload it on your, uh, apa tu? On your um, social media platform, Facebook, so on and so forth. It's the ambience that you are actually portraying to people. You're trying to tell people, you know, I like to go to Starbucks, here is where I live up with my friends, for example. 
Orang pun cakap, oh tu golongan have-have. Contohlah, contoh. And if you ask people, contohnya macam people who work from home, they like to go to Starbucks because it's very conducive. Most of them are coffee drinkers. So I can have coffee, I can have a place where I can just crash and do my work, stuff like that, you know. But then again, if you notice, yeah, because I like to go to Starbucks, it's not because I feel that that is a have-have place lah, eh? bukan. I like to go Starbucks because I'm a coffee drinker. And also, because of its brand and the kind of things that they are selling, they are not, they are not just selling the products, they are also selling the uh, hospitality, hospitality of their customer service. If you go to Starbucks, the way they greet you, the way they remember you are, that is the most important part about these baristas in Starbucks. Yeah? They can remember you. Surprisingly, when I wear my uh, apa tu, um, facial mask tu pun diboleh ingat. Kata, because I like to put my name Mr. E on my on my Starbucks punya yang tu. Uh, dia, dia, dia terus nampak muka saya, dia kata, Hi Mr. E, good morning. So, what would you like to have for today? Dia kata, the usual one, the usual one. But then again, you know, sometimes I like to ask him juga lah, do you know what my usual one ke? Dia kata, sometimes I forget. Because of course, they have too many customers, kan? But the confidence that they portray itu, the usual ones because surely when the, you you when you are impressed by the way they say it yeah the usual one yeah 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 you can respond the usual one uh apa ni caramel macchiato yeah uh, give it uh, can i have grande size contohnya you can repeat balik lah automatically dia dah tahu walaupun dia lupa tapi because you mention it dia dah tahu the confidence that they have tapi of course uh, beyond than that the hospitality the way they remember you those are the things that I'm pretty sure where if you work as a barista, so you will inform, of course, by your manager, ke contohnya lah kan. Um, try to pick up small things from your customer. Try to remember them. So that the, there's the connection between us and them. So a lot of things they are selling. But what I'm trying to point out here is, when you talk about, because what I'm saying here is selling value, kan. So those are the values included in Starbucks. They're not just selling coffee, but they're selling values. Like situ. And that is why they keep on having people coming to Starbucks even during MCO. Tak boleh dine in. Starbucks still survive. Imagine that. Imagine that. You know, when people say that they are actually selling the ambience, they are actually selling, they are actually, uh, actually selling the environment of Starbucks, can kita tak boleh dine in sekarang ni? Tapi Starbucks can still survive. They are opening more branches. Why? Because not only they are selling uh, apa ni, uh, and beyond ke environment ke, they are also selling lifestyle. People can just go to go through eh, Starbucks, uh, Starbucks punya drive through tu, beli coffee, ambil gambar, boomerang, boomerang. Upload on Instagram. Okay? Tak dapat, saya tulis kat situ caption, tak dapat lepak Starbucks, tak apa, janji dapat minum Starbucks hari-hari. Nampak tak? The kind of lifestyle that they are selling. These are the value points that you are selling to your, sebab itu Starbucks so remain prominent, remain relevant to people, although during MCO, surprisingly, they can survive, yeah, big companies, alright, kalau kestakat kopi yang dipilih tu, I'm pretty sure lah, you boleh cari je kopi tu kat mana-mana, tapi ada juga, dia add, dia, kalau you baca dekat Starbucks tu, they actually, they, they are, they, they buy their products, yeah, the coffee tu kan main products dia, daripada negara-negara yang tidak mengamalkan uh, child laboring, uh, yang tidak mengam, children labor lah, dia tak mengamalkan tu atau bukan dari ada penindasan ke dia tak nak, they are not going to support that. And they, they support business, uh, small business people so that they have money. Uh, they have macam ada promising punya buyers lah, eh, penjual, uh, pembeli. So ada pada Starbucks untuk beli kop, kopi dia orang. So they mentioned that if you read thoroughly, they mentioned about it. The way, that is also part of the value part of the value banyak. So, saya, saya suka, I like to use Starbucks as an example. When they, they are actually selling one product saja, coffee je. You can tengok kan, base, the basic part of Starbucks is just coffee. But other than coffee, a lot of things that they're selling. Values, yeah? From ambience, environment, right up until lifestyle, they are selling that. Eh? They are selling that. Kalau dulu-dulu, kalau you perasan eh, they, sekarang pun masih lagi ada, tapi there was, Dulu, kalau you nak beli dia punya planner, you cannot purchase their planner. You have to buy the coffee uh, for 15 drinks and then once dia dah masuk dalam sistem dia, you can redeem 
but you cannot you cannot buy tapi lepas-lepas tu of course i think because of the pandemic and what not and they realize that people are actually collecting so they also sell so they make it too either you buy the drinks and you can redeem or you just can straight away purchase but of course it will be a bit pricey and yet people are still purchasing it saya sampai ke hari ni i think i have five or six starbucks planner six years ago enam tahun yang dulu lah every every year i will buy starbucks planner every single not buy lah uh, those days when when you can, you could not buy you have to buy the drinks i bought it i bought the drinks and then i build, um, redeem the, the the planner but now you can purchase i straight away purchase up until today i have all planners i need for the past six years but if you ask me kenapa you say because because as i mentioned to you that means if i am influenced by it if i got persuaded by the uh, marketing tactic and strategies that means they have managed to sell you know the values they have managed to sell the lifestyle successfully to people like me people like us people semua orang yang kita minat orang yang minat yang minat kopi ni nampak tak ah uh, bukan senang eh and this is throughout the years of course and banyak benda lain ada masuk so you can actually there's a book about starbucks that you can actually go through you can actually look at it and then you can you can read about them how they actually survive jatuh dan bangunnya lah Okay, walaupun orang duk cakap lah Starbucks is supporting Israel apa, put aside those political and religious sentiment. Because yang kita nak, the good things out of a company like Starbucks ni, how they can actually survive and continue to flourish even during pandemic. Uh, they can even make money even during pandemic. Yeah? Satu, you tengok Starbucks tak ada masalah pun. MCO, fine. Shut the shut the door, shut uh, shut the door, cannot dine in. Okay, tak apa we can still survive yeah okay all right so back up your product buyers always want to know that you stand behind your product both from a value and technical sense the key to business success is not just selling your product to one customer but to build throngs of loyal customers yang saya cerita tadi tu okay yang saya cerita tadi that you starbucks starbucks so can be a concept for you to understand okay what i'm trying to say here all right and then make sure your solution solves serial problems so go all out to make sure potential customers can see how essential the magnitude of the problem but this is the thing when you want to sell this coffee for example what seems to be the problem now why do you want to sell coffee we have so many coffee out there we have starbucks we have this what how is yours different than others sebab tu ada seorang sahabat saya bukanlah sahabat kenalan ya di UITM ni doktor Alamak, saya lupa nama dia. Dia dia buat study PhD dia pasal kopi. And then uh, dia jual kopi dia. Kopi dia panggil Una Coffee. And sebenarnya, bila dia jual kopi dia tu, it's just the same as others. But how hers is different? Because dia, dia mungkin dia buat pasal biotech makanan lah kan? So dia, uh, dia punya kopi tu yang terpilih, yang mana kalau you minum, you are actually getting the right portion of... Um, semua kelebihan-kelebihan yang ada pada kopi tersebut. So it's pretty pricey lah. It's pretty pricey. Tapi when you drink it, you get the taste of the coffee and you get all the benefits. Because yang kalau coffee-coffee nice cafe ni, dia tak cakap pun the nutrients ke apa nutrition ke apa semua tak ada. Dia tak cakap. I mean ada-ada tapi dia tak cakap pun dia cakap just in general. Tapi yang ini memang betul-betul dia buat. So still again, she is selling coffee but she is trying to make it a different, uh, a difference. How hers is different than others. Okay, so if you are a person who like to drink coffee, but at the same time you want to stay healthy, you want to know what what you consume on daily basis. So with without any doubt, you can just purchase her coffee because surely her coffee is using you know uh, apa ni uh, ramuan ramuan yang terpilih dengan kelebihan kelebihan kesihatan yang ada because she did a study and that is also another point another value point that she can sell in a product because that is basically based on a real research that she did on her own that she did on her own to a point that she obtained a phd uh, nampak tak uh, so that can can, can also be another uh, another good uh, story lah okay so go ahead of potential problems that means don't be afraid to tell your investors that of course what are the future problems or what are the problems that you will foresee don't be afraid of this yeah don't be afraid of this jangan jangan risau because I'm not saying that when you are pitching an idea or a product or a service, semuanya perfect. Tak ada, tak, there's no, there will be no problems in the future. Tak, there will be. 
there will be some problems in the future. But don't be afraid to inform this to your future ataupun potential investors, to the judges contohnya, even to your assessors. Because, you know, you are, we are being frank, okay, and perhaps they know that these are the risks that they are taking, okay? So, I think uh, that will be all for my explanation about this. Do you have any questions so far? So far, no question, Mr. E. So far, no question, but, but okay, thank you. 